Hello, and welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Sharanda Hammond alongside Logan Brandes and Alexis Yoder. Penn State men's basketball currently sits with a 4-4 four four record on the season during head coach Micah Shrewsbury's first season in Happy Valley. Logan, I'll start with you. What's been a key takeaway so far this season? Well, so far we've seen this Penn State men's basketball team through eight games, and it's clear that there's no go-to guy on this team. It's clear that Micah Shrewsbury, and he said it multiple times after the games, that he is going to go with a hot hand, and he's going to ride with a hot hand throughout these games. We saw Sam Sessoms in the first couple games kind of get into a rhythm, and then during the Gulf Coast Showcase, and a little bit after that it was Seth Lundy, John Harrow, who were kind of leading the way. Now it's Jalen Pickett who had the best game against Ohio State. So this Penn State men's basketball team, they think they're – deep enough to where they can go to a different guy every single game, kind of keep defenses guessing. So far, it's led to mixed success right now. We'll see what uh, we'll see if Jalen Pickett kind of pick things up after his uh, great game against Ohio State is uh, high in a blue and white uniform in that game. So we'll see what kind of happens uh, with, that hot uh, with that hot hand strategy. Yeah, and I think that Micah Shrewsbury almost has to go with that hot hand strategy just because he's the new coach right now for Penn State. He doesn't really have a handle on what works well together with this team, especially because they have so many transfers and new faces in the program. But they do have a lot. They have been playing a lot of small ball lately. Like you said, Jalen Pickett had a great game last night, played the entire 40 minutes against Ohio State. And then you also have Sam Sessoms, who has been really a fixture up top for this team. But their struggle has really been down low. They really can't get any consistency in the paint so far. The games that they're losing, it's when they are not hitting a lot from three point range. And when John is out of the game. Jelani White has trouble holding down the middle of the floor for Penn State. And until they get their other two big guy transfers back in Greg Lee and Giovanni Scott, they're really going to be struggling on the interior. And if they're not hitting from three-point range, they're going to have trouble staying in competition with these Big Ten opponents. Yes, I totally agree with you. I think the past couple games have showed that we might need some more forwards and better rebounding and definitely shooting some threes. So the team just began conference play and dropped their first game to Ohio State 76-64. Alexis, what stood out to you in the loss? What stood out to me in this loss was just the way Ohio State was able to stay consistent in all facets of this game. They really had hot hands from beyond the three point from beyond the three point line to start this game. And despite going down early on after taking a five nothing lead, they really were able to establish EJ, Liz EJ Liddell and Zed Key on the interior as the game wore on. But they were really giving Penn State some trouble on the defensive side of the ball. You know, when they were able to hit those three-point shots, that's when Penn State was doubling Liddell and Key on the interior. They were really making sure that they didn't get easy looks on the inside, which did work. They really didn't have that big of an impact on the game in the first half, but that's also when Ohio State was money from outside the three-point line. But as they started to check out onto those shooters in the second half, that's when Liddell and Key started to get going on the inside. And really, Ohio State didn't skip a beat from the three-point line in the second half either. They were just making tough shots. Penn State was challenging them, and they were just knocking down shots. And I think that just shows how just plain good this Ohio State team is, and it shows the gap in the level of competition in the Big Ten where you see a team like Penn State who's really in a rebuilding process with a new head coach with so many new faces compared to teams like Ohio State which they're just so consistent and they're so strong in every aspect of the game and that's what really stood out to me in this matchup. Yeah I think just the main overall difference for, it was, be, was beyond the arc. You're not going to win games if you're Penn State when Ohio State's making 12 three-pointers and Penn State's making five. Overall that was really the big key there and I mean Kyle Young came off the bench for Ohio State he made all four of his three-point shots and he was really a main difference in that game he led both he, he led Ohio State with 15 points in that game even Jamari Wheeler that man right there in the screen who was notorious for not being able to hit three-pointers at, at Penn State he made one of his uh, three-point shots in that game as well you're not going to be able to win games if you're Penn State if you're not making those three-point shots it's plain and simple Five of, of those five three-pointers Jalen Pickett had two of them he took seven attempts to uh, make those two Overall, there was no recipe for success there. Even off the bench, only Miles Dredd was able to knock one three-pointer down, and he only had three points overall in that game in over 20 minutes played. So success was not there from beyond the arc. Looking ahead now, uh, what do you, what do the blue and white uh, need to focus on to find success this for the rest of the season? 
I think overall the big difference uh, or the big the big point here moving forward is the turnover battle. And I think Micah Shrewsbury, something he emphasizes uh, throughout his press conferences after games is they uh, Penn State needs to get 10 or less turnovers in a game. They had 15 against Ohio State. It was one of the bigger stats as they had way more turnovers than the Buckeyes in the game. And they're averaging over 13 turnovers per game on the season. So it's definitely a point of emphasis uh, moving forward that they can't be turning the ball over if you're Penn State. You have to be able to keep, keep care of the basketball there. That's how you get more shots on the offensive end and it's just going to lead to more success and really boost that four and four record as you move uh, further into conference play. Yeah and I think a, a big point of emphasis from Micah Shrewsbury has been the turnover battle and especially unforced turnovers. I mean this team has had several passes where they're passes are just extremely off the mark or they have a silly walk or you know even those backcourt violations which we saw a couple of those against Ohio State on both sides but nevertheless another point that Shrewsbury made after this game against Ohio State was playing a strong 40 minutes of basketball and that's what I want to focus on for this team they after Ohio State took a 5-0 lead to start the game Penn State answered with, with to make it a 12-5 run of their own and they took the lead and they got up by I want to say almost double digits in that first half and you know you were almost thinking is this going to be you know that upset that Penn State has pulled against Ohio State in the past but then as we saw to open the second half Ohio State really took that game back under their control. Penn State was able to make it close a little bit later in the game but once again silly turnovers and sloppy play on the offensive end which led to easy points for the Buckeyes on their end of the court so I think for this Penn State team they just need to focus on doing the little things right for the entirety of the game having less than 10 turnovers a game taking the right shots getting the dirty rebounds that nobody else is going to get on the floor to get so and that's been something that even John Hara has been emphasizing every time he speaks with the media. It's about doing the little things right, and that's what this team needs to do in order to stay competitive against these tough Big Ten opponents because it's not going to get any easier in the Big Ten. And, you know, they really can pull off an upset here if they just do the little things right or at least make the score respectable. Yeah, I say, and I totally agree. Um, I think when it comes to basketball, it's definitely one of those sports where you start strong, finish strong, and just keep pedal to the metal, keep going. The Nittany Lions will be back in action on Wednesday at 7 as they welcome wa the Wagner Seahawks. That will do it for this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For Logan Brandes and Alexis Schroeder, I'm Sharanda Hammond. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.